the top three ways to provide your wife with emotional safety. She wants to feel emotionally safe. She wants to be welcomed by you without you even saying anything. We teach this to the men in our Kingly Life Path membership. We teach this within our one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. And Cynthia and I, right now, we're going to get into the top three ways to provide your wife emotional safety. Welcome to the C-Note Show. We love you guys being here because you want to love and lead with mojo like a king to inspire more intimacy and connection in your marriage. She wants safety, inspiration, and sexual leadership, and you want to know how to solve deep problems and avoid big mistakes. Cynthia and I have been hosting the C-Note call here now for almost three years. She and I have about 50,000 hours combined in this field, and we love long-term monogamous relationship. We love deep intimacy and how to bloom polarity between a man and a woman in, in relationship. And that's what we're here to discuss because you want to have a phenomenal future with your wife. You want to know you've done everything you can, even if she's in the midst of pain. So how do I open her? How do I help her feel emotionally safe? And Cynthia and I are going to talk about that right now. I love seeing you guys here. Fantastic when you have your cameras on. Jamil's here, Larry, Chris. Andy, Dave, Jeff, you guys are fantastic. C's here as well. Randy, Chris, Patrick, Nevin, you guys are awesome. So as usual, Nevin, good to see you, buddy. As usual, <laughs> you can always ask questions. C's here too. Yeah, he's not flying a plane. I always remember him showing that picture from the cockpit. See, he's like a little flex, little flex there. I like it. Very nice. <laughs> Very welcome. Uh, so I love, I love when you guys are here, of course. You can ask questions. So unmute yourself and come in. You know, Please be respectful or post into the chat if you have a question. We're here for you, and I, I'd love for you to jump in. So when she's feeling, you don't know. Uh, look at this picture. Like, How is she feeling? Is she scared? Is she overwhelmed? Is she anxious? Uh, does she feel guilt within herself? You're not sure. Maybe it's a mix of all those things, and you want to know how to step-by-step -step bring emotional safety into your marriage. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Top three ways to bring emotional safety to your wife to provide that. Number one, welcome her emotions wholeheartedly. And when we teach this, it's actually be ready to, to welcome her emotions wholeheartedly. So to be ready how to, of how to do that is something we teach step by step, certainly to our, our clients, but to welcome her emotions wholeheartedly. Cynthia, why is it important that she feel as though... Her man is wanting to feel all of her emotions. He's wanting to be there no matter what she's going through. Even if he's confused, like maybe with this picture, you may not know what's happening with her. So why is that important that a man welcome her emotions wholeheartedly? Yeah. And, and I know intrinsically there, there's almost that level of like of unfairness because on the other end, is she receiving all your emotions? Not really. But what it, it does for the feminine to feel like anything she expresses, whether it's the, the deepest, darkest fear or pain or anger or the lightest joy and the greatest pleasure, she gets to know that you receive her fully, that all she is is welcomed. And without that, she tends to feel like that the care isn't there, that she's less than in your eyes or not as important as other things in her eyes. And a woman so connected, so woven with her emotional experience that if her emotional experience isn't allowed, she feels like she's not allowed. And then from there, there could be a lot of years of resentment built up for that. Well, if she feels like her emotional experience isn't allowed, then she's not allowed. How so? Yeah, same one. Yeah, there. I think because women are, they are their emotional world and many of them don't realize that that's their reality or that in the masculine world, that's a little bit different a reality. But because if she feels like she's not allowed, she will automatically assume that you have some judgment of her or are trying to maybe push down a part of her or are not welcoming something that she's trying to put forth. And, and from that comes a, a shutdown in her willingness to be intimate, emotionally intimate, physically intimate. And, and that's kind of a death knell to a woman. She has to feel that somewhere. So if it's not in relationship here, it is it, sh it does end up trying to be met in other hmm. areas. Wow. So she, we haven't talked about that deeply, actually, much. 
where if she's not able to be intimate emotionally with you in some way, she's going to find or she yearns for an outlet in some capacity for that. Or as we've seen, some women completely shut themselves down, which which ends in basically collapse or depression, that kind of a thing. What, what would you add on yeah, to that? that? Yeah, that depressive piece is huge. Uh, that in itself is kind of an outlet because that's uh, a very internal, very intimate place with herself. Other outlets that she'll seek out that intimacy, it might be her work. It might be other friends. It might be going to the gym. Uh, she will, no matter whether it's totally internal or very external, that's how she lives and breathes. And without it, she's nothing. This this grayness, she won't even know who herself is. Yeah, thank you. So what man may have a question about this? Unmute yourself coming in. And I also want every man to put into the chat, how would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 here on this first way? being ready yourself to welcome her emotions wholeheartedly one being the worst and a 10 being you feel like you're pretty much a rock star not that you're perfect but you feel pretty good about that anyone have a question about this i know there's a post in the chat as well come on in if you have a question i'm finding in this work men can't seek affirmation from other from women for their self-esteem they have to stand solid but just what cynthia said the thought coming to me just to think well woman have a completely different um, approach, they have to have that affirmation, otherwise they move on or they close down, which, which, how are you going to fix, fix that? What, each the woman need the affirmation and when they don't get it, they seek it. When men seek the affirmation from women for their own self-esteem, they're little boys. So do we have little girls and little boys? I don't know. I'm getting confused. Sure. Well, I mean, my initial thought is, that uh, the feminine is much more like a child. When we're children, we're much more in, quote, feminine energy, which again is a representation. It's an archetype. None of us are fully 100% feminine or masculine. These are energies within us. So they describe different ways of being, different ways of connecting, different ways of focus on goals in the world or in life. So feminine, quote unquote, is, is much more childlike. And then, of course, the concept of polarity, what turns a woman on, what turns a man on, often a woman has a feminine sexual energy, feminine sexual essence. And so therefore she'll be turned on by a man who isn't needy, doesn't act like a little boy and doesn't seek validation through her. However, a man is often turned on by seeing a woman who's in bloom, spinning fire above her head or (laughs) hula dancing or stripping in front of him or you know, basking in the sunset just within her own self, seeing that expression, a man is often turned on by that. And that's more of one of being seen and yes, wanting to be validated more like a child than an adult man. That's definitely true. So from there, Patrick, what what question might you have from there? Or is there a disappointment there that it's unfair? Well, no, it's just um, to my Kiwi logical brain. And, um <laughs> <laughs> sort of an oxymoronic um, bloody approach to humans mating in captivity. There will, there's always, <laughs> always going to be this bloody conflict, but I just really find it strange that women, they look for positions of power and and, and want equality and, and all that sort of thing, but if they can't stand in their own truth, that they seek affirmation in that way, I just find that interesting. Yeah, I mean, I find it interesting that I made my career out of this. And so so is Cynthia for her entire, right? So we find this very interesting as well. Um, And to be clear, we're talking about intimacy. We're talking about in a relationship or in a a moment of relationship, if it's just a one night stand or however long the relationship may ask. That's that's the dynamics we're speaking of within a relationship, not in the world, not in career, not your sister, you know, women are capable in the in careers in any direction that they want to, of course, but we're talking about an intimacy. Thanks, Patrick. I appreciate it. I don't I don't have a Kiwi logical mind either. I need to we need to visit you and you can rub off on us a little bit more. Not literally. Not literally. I need to be careful that I my scriptwriter didn't didn't approve that line, Patrick. Thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. Nevin, come on in, please. Yeah. So um it's such a great topic. It's such so so thank you for you know bringing this up. Um, I feel like I got a pretty good handle on, on the emotional validation, except here's the exception. And this is my question for you. When, uh, when it's like specifically directed towards me, like a, like a kind of like an attack towards me, that's when I'm, I'm just, you know, I get kind of deer in headlights. I, 
I, I now, after a year of this work, I have the awareness to be like, okay, this is happening. But um, whereas, you know, prior to this work, I was very reactive, like a, like a, like a child, you know, kind of that level of, of, of but now I know what's happening, but I, li I literally, I'm in a place where I don't know what to say or how to, like, how do you validate someone's emotions when they're directed directly at you, especially anger or frustration or resentment, these kind of, any kind of feeling like that's really negative towards you? That's the part where I really kind of struggle with how to do that. Sure. So with the caveat that uh, we're not including abuse, right? So an, an abuse is a relative term. It's to what you believe abuse to be, let's say. I don't like labels. I don't like toxic or abuse labels, mm -hmm. catch-alls. But for you... Um, well, let me let me press pause for 10 seconds, Nevin, and I'll I'll introduce the next step because this plays right in, right? So okay. number two of the top three ways to provide emotional safety is you being able to breathe in the moment, to breathe and relax in the moment, or to take a break if need be. So with that said, if she says, you have the tiniest, most pathetic penis that I've ever seen in my entire life, you may Would not- never have may, <laughs> would never happen. We know you're fucking hung, dude. We that we know it's like a baby's would arm. It's never okay. Exist in this reality. What, what is Austin Power? What does Austin Power say? Like baby's arm holding an apple or something like that. Yeah, right. it's dragging on the ground, bro. Okay, so this this would never happen to you. All right, so hypothetically, not you. Another the opposite the opposite world, right? So how do you your your name's almost a palindrome? So. Niveen Almost, in another dimension has a tiny penis, right? <laughs> okay, okay. He's got a micro penis, which I've seen, by the way. I used to do body painting. Ask me, nice. ask me that question. I used to do body painting, and one of our gigs was at a nudist colony. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So painted a man with, I mean, and we're talking micro, dude, like micro. Nice. So let's pretend you have, yeah. Let's pretend. <laughs> Nevin's like, I would fucking jump off a bridge. <laughs> yeah. Going from dragging on the ground to, to micro penis. So you have the most, or like, or you're horrible in bed. She'd never say that either. You're a rock star. I get it. So like, you're absolutely horrible in bed. Now, can you breathe in that moment? Uh, let me give an example. So for instance, totally different context. Uh, I've had a lot of difficulty with my son when he was a teenager, especially basically 14 to 16. So those three years, 14, 15, 16. And I've been in teacher meetings where you know, the teacher is telling me something that was completely unexpected. And often it would really hit my guts as a father. So I felt this visceral, well, defense of my son. And, you know, this is, this is my son. So I'm going to, and this, this anger, this disappointment, this judgment of the teacher or the principal or the, I mean, mm -hmm. my son definitely deserved what was being said, but still had this visceral defensiveness and being in the school, sitting across from it, you can't go tell the the principal to go f herself. I mean, not, not if you really want to have any kind of productive, you know, discussion after that without the police arriving or something. <laughs> so I've been in those instances where I just like flushed, you know, I'm sure that my face looked, I looked down, I basically looked down at the table and just anger throughout all my face and my neck. Right. And I'm, I realized I'm holding my breath. This is, this is only about five years ago at this point. So I realized I'm holding my breath, anger, and I, there's no option really for me to just lash out or be overly defensive here. It's just not appropriate. It's not socially acceptable. So in that instance, I have a lot of social pressure to handle my shit, basically, to take a breath, realize this, you know, this isn't personal. The whole context is different than your woman standing in front of you. But physiologically, to me, in my experience, it's very much the same, right? You're terrible in bed, or um, you betrayed me for the last 15 years in marriage, or uh, you know, you failed on our wedding day, you failed to get the right color of flowers. And so I'm going to hold that against you for the rest of time. Or uh, you checked out when we had children and you've left me abandoned for the last 15 years, me just to raise our children and you can do whatever you want in life. And I hate my life and you've done this to me. So any of those really difficult situations, physiologically, it's very similar. So with all of that, said for you nevin where are you would you say physiologically and assuming it's not over an abuse type of line where you're just going to stop it altogether like whoa that's that's not working for me you know let's pick this up later but we're not going to call each other names and you just basically take a break assuming it's not over a line where are you physiologically in your ability to breathe and stand within the downpour if it's appropriate what would you say 
I mean, I've gotten much better over the past year for sure. Like I, once I learned about boundaries and all that, um, you know, I, I don't know if I brought this up like maybe nine months ago, there was something where she started getting into something and really be like really abusive in front of the children. And that's when I was like, no, you're not going to talk like me, to me like this in front of the children or, or preferably ever, but definitely not in front of the children. So I kind of put a stop to that. And I was like, okay, this is not happening right now. And sometimes she'll call me late at night to talk about something related to the children or something. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm tired. I cannot be productive right now this is not a good time for me let's find a time during the day and so i'm starting to like kind of put those boundaries where i i know i can't be productive after like 10 p.m to talk about this emotional stuff i'm too tired and 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 i'm too reactive you know i've learned that about myself i know it now and i know when to put those boundaries down so i'm getting a lot better at that um but when we're having like a you know during the day scheduled conversation about whatever you know with a separated co-parent it's it's um certain things can come up and 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 if it's nothing's come up recently that got me super heated so i I haven't had tested been haven't been tested like that recently but i'm getting better at stepping away when i need it taking the time like hey this is getting a little bit intense uh can we revisit this you know tomorrow or something like that you know um but but it still comes back to how do i emotionally validate her in those moments maybe i'm not heated maybe she's the one heated at me about something but you know i'm feeling maybe shame or guilt about something, or maybe I'm, I'm going through my own experience, but how to validate her in those moments, you know? Yeah, exactly. So let's, let, thank you. That's a great question. Let me press pause. And yeah, you, and that's a great question. So let me give you a couple of answers of how, and then I'll ask Cynthia about it. So one answer may be, hey, you may have a point, or you may be right, or I could totally see why you think that I could totally see why you feel that way. Now, if I say it in a flippant way, like, oh, hello, <laughs> pussy just Pussy just jumps into my lap, guys. This is how it works. The kitties. So if I say it very condescending, like, oh, I can see how you think that. And I'm like, have insults in my mind and I despise her. Then that's obviously not going to come across well. But the same words, if you can actually have compassion and have kingly vision for her in high regard and how to do this exactly is what we teach within our coaching and in our clients. Uh, Just like, I could totally see why you feel that way. Like, I understand why you're incredibly mad at me. So those with, with that ability, Cynthia, what comes across for you? So as Nevin was saying his ability to breathe and take a break. And as he's practicing boundaries now, and he's becoming better at welcoming her emotions. And so with a man's ability to actually have compassion, but not necessarily agree with her, you know, he might say something that she knows logically, uh, he's not really on her side about it, but he can have an open heart and have compassion for her. What does that feel like for her? Yeah, that's a very different thing because she'll feel you in different layers. She'll feel that your own wiring or base point hasn't been thrown off by what she said. Uh, and, and just holding space of like, you know, Hey, I see why you might think that way or, uh, Holding a boundary that represents that you see and hear and are not negating her feeling, even though you in your mind and your body are not agreeing with her story, that's really stepping stones for the feminine to not only feel safe to express what's going on, but also to build a really deep respect because your energy is unflappable, but it's holding like these two polarities, like holding the polarity of her truth and then holding the your end of your truth. And that's what ultimately breeds safety for her uh, trust. And to also know that she can't just blow you over or that her story is going to be the frame or uh, that her story is going to ring the bell of what you believe is true. Very well said. And we've talked before about that quintessential masculine is being able to hold or juggle or breathe through competing energies or different energies at the same time. So talk about that, how that's different from femininity, not necessarily being able to hold different energies at the same time, but it all being feeling mixed like a soup together. Yeah. So I think that's kind of the basis of this incredible attraction that women feel toward your masculinity because they don't know in their own body the ability to stay solid in the storm or to hold two realities at once. She might try that in herself and maybe she's done a lot of personal work where she gets better, but her world is the soup of the emotion and the moment. And that's why she sees seems so swayed by things or can be so much at one time or come over the top with an emotion. It really is that her whole reality is that. 
and she, the feminine can actually learn from your, your masculinity, how to feel a little bit of her own more solidity in the storm, to be attracted to your ability to do that, to feel that you can face that kind of challenge. And, and then to also know in herself that that's part. It, it paints a vision of something that is possible and very learnable that I didn't know about in the past. And that's what you guys are here to learn. See, are you able to come in? You gave yourself a, a four slash mm -hmm. six in your ability to welcome her emotions wholeheartedly. T tell us about that. Well, it's more like what I, where I used to be as a four, mm -hmm. more like where I am now, more like a six or a seven, probably, because I've learned to like deal with my uh, reaction now more than uh, just take everything in, let it play in there and think about my responses now instead of just spitting stuff out and start insulting more than or dismissing feelings or rolling my eyes or walking away. Uh, so now it's more like a conversation than than action, than argument, I guess. So it's more like I listen to what she has to say. And if it's my fault, then I mean, I will agree with her and I will apologize if I need to apologize or... Uh, if I don't think it is, I mean, I'll still listen to it and validate her, how she feels, uh, but more like listen to her and I guess respond more than react. Uh, so that's why I give myself a four because that's where I used to be. Uh, I used to just walk away, roll my eyes uh, and just kind of like defend myself pretty much. Uh, and after what, so like going on almost two years now, uh, about a year now, she's been sleeping in a different room, uh, which at this point, I mean, I asked her, but two days ago, actually, that I, I needed to have a conversation with her because it's not going where I want it to go. And I want her, the problem with her is that she cannot be straight shooter, mm. you know? So what I want to know is, where is this going? Am I going to be a roommate for 10 years? Or is this going to be a relationship? Because if I'm going to be a roommate for the next 10 years, I don't want to be here. You know, yeah. and that's what I want to know. Yeah, we totally, under, we totally understand. And, and one thing, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a coaching question about that? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm chuckling because I don't know how you're going to take this, but it's often a bad idea to ask your woman what's going on with the relationship because she doesn't know. She doesn't want to be responsible for forging a direction and it not working because then it would be her responsibility and her fault, so to speak. Uh -huh. and it, would also, it would also put you in the passenger seat. It would put you in the follow, you would be following her relationship lead yeah. if she were to tell you. So just straight up asking her, hey, where are we going? I don't want to be a roommate for 10 years. I'm kind of waiting for you. How would you, how would you say that otherwise? Or what, what do you mean by that? Well, I, it's not exactly just that. It's, uh, we've been working on certain things right? Like the communication part of it and my whole demeanor of not valuing her feelings and stuff like that. And I think I've have improved on that a lot, right? But every time we talk about it's something new, you know, and every time it's something new. So if something gets fixed, the next is, uh, is something new. So it's, it's a never ending yeah. list of tasks that I have to, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's Absolutely. almost like a penalty box and I get back on the ice <laughs> and I keep hooking people. All right, two minutes. All right, you're back out on the ice. Bam, another penalty. You cross check somebody. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but it's a new rule that you hadn't heard before this time. And now you don't know why you're in the penalty box, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I'll say something that's a bit simplistic, but all of those complaints are just symptoms of really what's going on underneath. And I think you know this intellectually, and this mm -hmm. is something that you're looking to discover. And we could certainly talk much more about that in detail. If you'd like to talk with me or Cynthia about that, we absolutely can. But um, yeah, so see, let me ask you one more question. We'll take a step forward. How, how do you feel is your ability to do number two here, to, to breathe in the moment or take a break if need be? How good would you say you are at that? I would say probably like an eight out of that because I've, I've learned now to not to react, you know, so kind of just let it come in, process it and think about it. If I don't have a response, then I'll be like, look, can I get back to you? You know, same way she, she told me I asked her two days ago that we needed to talk and she's like i can't talk right now i'm not ready give me a couple of days and i was like that's fine let me know when you're ready you know so that's where we left it so something that i'm working on pretty much yeah fantastic so it sounds like, yeah it sounds like both of you are actually practicing that both of you are feeling open to stand up for a time that you need or a boundary that you may need it sounds like both of you is that fair to say yes she's working on something else too because she's dealing with uh children of uh alcoholic parents so if she's dealing with a whole new stuff on her side over there and uh last time we talked she's like right now i gotta take care of myself so a lot of it is going to be 
probably like 80% myself working on her mom stuff. Probably another 10% is going to be the kids. 5% is going to be work. And maybe I get like 3%. <laughs> maybe yeah i i'd love to talk with you about that right that yeah. and then maybe that's true i don't know i'm not there and maybe that's part of a mindset you know we have to be careful what we believe we have to be careful i know you yeah. said it with a smile and that may be absolutely true and you have humor about it it looks like see but yeah i'd love to talk with you more about it all right Good to see you. Yeah, fantastic. I'll press pause on you. So we're about to get into number three here. You may have heard number one and number two before, most likely not the way Cynthia and I speak about it. You probably heard about welcome her emotions, be able to take a break. And we're going to get into number three here, which I doubt that you've heard before. Cynthia and I created this solely for our group coaching, the Kingly Life Path, and I'm going to actually post into the chat. If you're curious about reaching out to me or Cynthia, and you want to know, well, how can I reinvent my marriage? How can I make her not want to lose me? How do I become the man that she doesn't want to lose? Reach out to us, right? We've got the free 45 minute audiobook. You can reach out to me directly, greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. Let's get into number three. I'll ask Cynthia about this. Emotional safety, number three, lead her joy plus movement plus surrender. So joy within your body, within your heart, you could say inspiration within your body as a man or within your heart. Gratitude could be another word you might use. So talk with us, Cynthia, about what is the man has joy or gratitude or inspiration in his body, in his heart. He's in the present moment, all mm -hmm. these skills that we teach. And what would what is the plus movement and plus surrender, would you say, uh, here to share with these guys? Yeah, that's it's such a powerful experience when I as a woman woman or hear other women speak of standing in the presence of a man who is in heart energy. When I when I get to feel your joy, even when there's a storm going on, there's a reminder to the instinctual feminine that no matter what the height of emotionality, things are okay. And so if she gets to feel that around you, no matter what, no matter what dart she's throwing or fire bolts or whatever it is, over time, she will learn not only to trust that, but then also can begin to follow your lead. You know, the way the feminine moves past stuck emotions and that that feeling, see, you're referencing that no matter what we resolve, there always is this underlying emotion she's trying to get known or fix. When she can trust you to lead her through that and have a little movement, like taking her into a hug, or you're talking and you're walking in with hand in hand, her body will get to begin to process those stuck emotions more than even just talking it out will, or she thinks talking it out will. And that, that evolution that wringing out the sponge of a feeling for her where it gets to fully be squeezed out then allows women to be in a in a real place of surrender with you not only in the moment but when something really difficult comes up for them in the future or they remember a past hurt they have a more relaxed ability to talk about it and share that with you in a way that actually resolves and it's not this continual pattern of oh, penalty box, penalty box, penalty. Yeah. So I'd love to actually open this up. If you have a question about her not surrendering. So this is more of, we call phase three of this work or reinventing or relaunching the potential intimacy or version 2.0 of the marriage at that point. So this bringing joy within your own self. At, at first, she won't, she won't care what's going on within you. But as you progress within this, she'll start to be interested in you again. She'll start to feel like the relationship is above water. She won't feel like it's drowning as much anymore. So she's more interested in what's going on with you and potentially talking with you because you're not asking hummingbird questions. You're not being needy. We're past this now when you're to a point of asking her to move in space and then directly inviting her into surrender. And inviting her into surrender is a big topic, certainly. But I'd love to hear who has a question about this. So unmute yourself and come on in. You got Cynthia here on the C Note Show. What question do you have? I know, Jamil, you gave yourself a five earlier in your ability to welcome her emotions. Uh, yeah, hi. Hey, good to see you. Hi, good to see you too. 
both of you. Um, yes, um, I guess uh, regarding emotions, I guess it just it fluctuates from sometimes a really grounded to like if it's really directed at me, then I'm triggered. <laughs> <laughs> But if it's about something else she's upset about, it's a lot easier to be objective. Yeah. What's the most difficult one that she points at you? Um, um, Your penis is way too big, like Nevin's, like just drags on the ground. It's too much. I, w- I wish that was. <laughs> that was the only just, comment. But just no, nod maybe... and smile. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. No. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm not helping her enough or something. I'm not, yeah, supporting her enough. Okay. Yeah, that one hits me too, because I... I always feel like I'm giving for my family and I care so much, right? So what goes through your mind? What's the message? What's the thought that goes through your mind when she says you're not doing enough, you don't care? Um, well, in the moment, probably I'm feeling like do you not recognize all the things that I do do and have you ignored all, all of those things? And then if I take a step back, I'm like, she's got a lot of anxiety and she can't think about, she's thinking about her own needs and she can't she can't be empathetic to my needs in that moment. Okay. And then does it go better for you from there for you? Like, do you feel more calm? Are you able to bring yourself back down? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Once I can sort of start thinking about, yeah, once, once it's, attack has finished yes (laughs) yeah so what about real you know real question what about that is difficult it sounds like you're starting to learn to handle it quite well um i guess i could well i guess i wish i didn't react like in the moment sometimes i react to that that direct criticism and then i defend and that doesn't really lead anywhere positive i see yeah I, i want to say something to you jamil and to all men in that you know i'm not a a perfect monk that is unaffected by my neighbor spitting in my face or something, or, you know, my spouse or someone in my family being insult, feeling insulted or right. So I'm not immune to that. Maybe a monk in the Himalayan mountains isn't affected by anything in life, but that's not me. And that's not most people I would say. Uh, So it's one thing to have a reaction, but if you're aware of it, you can process it. I guess the, the problem is when you then defend and, emotionally defend yourself is what i'm hearing yes yeah or yeah exactly um yeah i i defend myself and then i'm like well what's the point of this afterwards because i'm not going to convince her in that moment in time so what was the point of me saying it? yeah absolutely have you tried in that moment first of all taking a breath right not defending yourself it might take you 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds if need be and then asking her to move to a different space so over near the window or Hey, come outside. Let's talk about this outside. Just finding an excuse to literally invite her into a a different space of the house. It could be five feet away, could be close, or it could be outside. Have you tried moving her and then asking her to open, asking her to surrender, meaning, tell me more about that. This seems like you're really upset. What else is going on here for you? That's one form of surrender for her to open to. Have you tried movement like that, Jimmy? Um, my only sort of movement is I maybe tried to give her a hug, which is probably a bit too intense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, totally different thing. Yeah. So what's the difference? That this is great, Jamil. I'm gonna press pause on you. Thank you. We have a we have a few minutes left. This is fantastic. So of course, all you guys know, if you want to know more, reach out to me. Right. This is what we do professionally in the groups or in one on ones. Uh, so what's the difference for? I'm, I'm curious what Cynthia's gonna say. <laughs> what's the difference between? Okay, I'm breathing. Like that really hurt. I'm thinking that really was painful. Okay, I'm getting over it now. Um, she's obviously upset and it won't help me to argue. Okay, hey, you know, that's a that's a really great question or I totally f- understand why you're bringing that up. Let's go talk about it outside or come over here. Let's stand by the window or let's go get some fresh air. What's the difference between that and, okay, now I'm going to hug you. Yeah. And I would say like the hugging could be like, let's say this is a very practice skill and, and later down the line that totally works in these more beginning stages it's a really good sign is if you do invite her into a different space and she follows, it's almost in a non unconscious way. She's, she's starting to follow your lead. And that's really wonderful because it's starting to break her from her own frame and her own story of what is true in the moment and brings her to a brand new space with you with a brand new energy. So she can't really uh, almost like trigger herself back into the old, old feelings. It's 
something new. It's something different. Whereas a hug is almost, I've felt that before as a, you you are going to take my energy. You are going to receive me. You are going to surrender. And I can feel in my own feminine, how there's like a desire to like bite back or retreat or like your own, your own skin, your own space is being um, pushed in upon. That could even be the case there. You could be in a fantastic relationship, but it's a really difficult moment or something happens in that moment. And so in that moment, that's too many steps up the staircase of intimacy. Yeah. 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 And all of this, like the, the humanness of just what it feels like for us as people to have triggers and then how we react, how she reacts with her biochemical to her triggers and then feeling your energy is so normal. And what excites me about this work and excites me about the women in your lives is they get to experience something different, something different than just the human reaction, just the, then her evolutionary feminine response, she gets to know that there's a different way to do this and actually find a gift in emotionally sharing with you, find a gift in being seen and heard and received by this incredible presence. And I'll tell you, there are the percentage of women who get to understand that in partnership is, is very, very small. Well said. Thank you. Fantastic stuff. So I'll let you guys know that we do have, what, over 500 videos on YouTube right now. We've been posting those for four years. So if you want more from us, if you want to support us, subscribe to us. You're going to get more videos as we come along. We're going to be doing new styles of videos this year. We're going to be doing reaction videos to scenes from a movie so we can actually see the polarity that's happening on the screen one way or the other, good or not, good or otherwise. And Cynthia and I will talk about that. We're also going to be doing some more direct teaching style videos. Subscribe and support us. Otherwise, we'd love to see you guys in the forum. Ask us questions, reach out in between. Love seeing you guys. Cynthia, thank you so much.